looks at three notes on circuits, and I know this says honors, but this video is for honors and non-honors students. I'm just going to do a couple extra slides at the end for the honors students. So my non-honors, my CP students, just make sure you're listening up so you know um, what you don't need to know um, for my class. So circuits. Um, we mentioned this in concept two. It's a closed path through which electrons can flow. And you've seen um, some pictures like this, but now we're going to dive in more to these circuits. There's actually two main kinds of circuits that we find. They are series circuits and parallel. So a series circuit current has only one path to travel through. That's like this top picture you see here. We've, remember, this is our battery. We've got our wire, our conductor. We've got our switch, it's closed so our light bulbs are on, and then of course we have the light bulbs. Notice that out of our battery there's only one pathway for that current to travel through. This is how flashlights tend to be wired. Also, um, holiday lights, kind of like back in the day, um, maybe not as much now, but if you ever, if one of the bulbs went out and the whole string went out, you knew that was a series circuit. Nowadays they do a little bit better with that, but that's what a series circuit is. There's only one path to travel through. Whereas down here, a little bit more complicated, is the parallel circuit. This contains more than one path for current to travel through. So if you notice, we got our switch again. That's closed. That's just, thus the light bulbs are on. We've got our battery here. So current can go through this pathway, and then it can also go through this pathway. So that's what makes it parallel. This is how your house or your apartment is probably wired. You know, one person can be blow drying their hair in the bathroom, the other person can be using the dishwasher in the kitchen, and it's not, you know, they're not affecting each other because they're wired separately from each other. This is how schools tend to be wired as well. Now, a few more differences um, between these, and by a few I mean a lot. So series circuits, like we said, are one branch or one path. They're much, much simpler. The problem with the simplicity, though, is that all of the components must work at the same time. So if this light bulb is on, this one has to be on. If this one's off, this one's going to be off, too. Also with a series circuit, the more items you add to it, there's a greater overall resistance because there, there's more for the electrons to travel through. So that's just going to build up the resistance there. What's interesting, though, is that voltage decreases as it travels through the circuit, so it's actually going to lower. Current, though, is going to stay the same throughout. Now, in a parallel circuit, there's multiple branches or pathways, so it's going to be more complex. But the nice thing is that you can use one component at a time. So one of these light bulbs can be on and one can be off. They both can be on, they both can be off. It doesn't matter. In a parallel circuit, the more items you add, it actually decreases the resistance because there's more pathways for the electrons to travel through. Voltage is going to stay the same throughout, and current, though, is going to be split among each pathway, which is kind of interesting, those differences there. Now, it's not always that simple either. Some can actually be a combination, both series and parallel. So in this picture, we can actually see both. These two light bulbs are connected in series. So if you notice, when I go out this battery, if I go through this light bulb and this one, I have to go through one to get to the other. So they're connected within the same singular pathway. Whereas these two light bulbs are connected in parallel. I can go through this pathway or I can go through this one. These two do not need to be on, the same, uh, on at the same time. These two do as well as these two, which is kind of interesting. Now, one skill I want you to learn is how to draw circuits. So we need to learn some basic notation for them. So first, series circuits are super nice because they're just one pathway. So whenever you're drawing a series circuit, just go ahead and start off by just drawing a rectangle. That's going to be your pathway. And then you'll just add things to your rectangle. Parallel circuit, you're going to basically do your rectangle, but you're just going to add some bars in the middle of it. This parallel circuit is showing, showing three different pathways um, to it. So if, let's say if we had the battery at the top, you could go through pathway one, pathway two, pathway three. Um, so that's your parallel circuit. You can also have a combo um, like the one we just looked at. I probably won't have you drawing these just because they're a, um, a good bit more challenging. 
Now, this is some notation for my class that you are going to have to have memorized um, what these different symbols are. So the first one is switches. This is what a closed switch would look like, and this is what an open switch would look like. We also have light bulbs. They can be pictured as a circle with an X or kind of a circle with a loop-de-doop, -loop, I like to say, in them. Um, I think it represents that filament that you normally see in light bulbs. We also have resistors. So these are put in circuits to increase the resistance, to slow the current down. They can be a circle with kind of like a zigzag through it or just kind of this rectangle here. Also, you know, a good circuit needs a battery. So um, if we were just looking, this is one battery, looks like this but some circuits have two or three or four. This is showing just two. So if I ever have you draw multiple batteries, you just put them kind of right next to each other like this. Lastly, we have the ammeter and the voltmeter. An ammeter is used to measure, measure the amount of current. So this is only used in a series circuit. And a voltmeter is used to measure the voltage drop or the voltage change. So we only find these in parallel circuits. So I think the easiest way to learn this is just a practice. So something you could see is I could say draw a series circuit with a battery, two light bulbs, one resistor, and an open switch. So anytime you see series circuit, you should go woo and be excited and just go ahead and start by drawing your rectangle. Then you just add all the things that I tell you to have. And honestly, the order doesn't matter in a series circuit. So you just throw it all on there. All right, so I've got my rectangle. It says a battery, so there's my one battery, two light bulbs, so there's two light bulbs, one resistor, so there's a resistor, and then I have an open switch right there. Pretty simple. Now, parallel circuit's a little bit more complicated. So draw a parallel circuit with two batteries, two light bulbs on separate branches, a voltmeter on one of the branches, and a switch that could turn the whole circuit off. So first, for a parallel circuit, draw that rectangle like we did for series, but we need light bulbs on two of them on separate branches, so we need two branches. So you're going to have to add another branch. Okay, so I've got my main rectangle, and then I have my extra branch here. Two batteries, put them back to back. Two light bulbs, notice they're on separate branches, so I can go through just this light bulb, or I can go through just this light bulb. If I put them on the sides, um, they would have been in series. They need to be on separate branches. All right, the voltmeter needed to be on one branch, so it could have been this one or this one. Didn't really matter. I just picked this one. And then I need a switch somewhere that could turn the whole circuit off. Anytime you see a switch that could turn the whole circuit off, just put it near the battery because all current has to go in and out of the battery. So if you put the switch near that, you know it's going to cover the whole circuit. If it had said to turn off the lights individually, you would have wanted to put them right next to the lights on their little individual branches. So just keep that in mind for future notice. All right, so let's practice. First, I want you to draw a series circuit with two batteries, a light bulb, an ammeter, and a closed switch. And then for the next one, I want you to draw a parallel circuit with two batteries, three light bulbs, one resistor, and three switches. Each light should be able to be turned off individually. So take a minute and pause and try this. And then when you're ready, you can press play. So here's my series, my big rectangle. Two batteries back to back. I got a light bulb, I got an ammeter, and I got a closed switch. Again, the order doesn't matter. If you put yours over here, over there, that's fine. All right, parallel circuit. Two batteries, three light bulbs, so th and they need to be turned off individually, so they need to be on separate branches. There's my three switches to turn them off. It didn't say if they needed to be closed or open, so I just drew them open. And then um, I need my resistor, and it didn't give me any specifications on that, so I just put one here. All right, now, got to mention, this is the last thing for CP honors, you got a little bit more, is overheating. How do we prevent it? If there's too much voltage, if that difference is too great and it's too steep and the current's flowing too much, um, and a circuit can't handle it, overheating can occur. So there's two ways we prevent this, fuses and circuit breakers. A fuse is just a small piece of metal, um, and it melts when it gets overheated. And when it does that, that allows that basically the switch to open. So the circuit is no longer closed, it's open, and that would no longer allow current to flow. Circuit breaker is the exact same idea, except for that piece of metal just bends. So when it gets overheated, it bends, that opens the circuit, prevents current from flowing, and you'd have to reset um, in order to get that current flowing again.
Now, that is all that my CP students or my non-honors, I mean, need to know. So y'all can go ahead and move on to your practice. Honors, stay with me. We're going to learn a little bit more math. So we're going to learn in honors how to calculate resistance, which is done differently for a series, circuit, and parallel. And I'm not going to give you the equations for these for your assessments because it's a concept I want you to learn. So for a series circuit, to find the resistance, all you're going to do is add up all of the resistances of the different objects on the circuit to get the total. So let's say there's three resistances, or like resistors or light bulbs have resistance. The total resistance is just the resistance of one plus the resistance of two plus the resistance of three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, given however many objects there are. Easy peasy, right? Parallel is a little bit trickier. You're going to have to find a common denominator, add them up, cross multiply, and then solve for total resistance because this is your equation. 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over resistance 1 plus 1 over resistance 2 plus 1 over resistance 3, etc. It's a little bit trickier. We're going to have to do a little refresher on fractions to figure this out, but we can do it. So let's try. First, let's start with an easy one. Find the total resistance of this series circuit. So series, total resistance, you just add them up. So we've got a, um, a, um, excuse me, a light bulb with 2 ohms of resistance, another light bulb with 5, so I just add 2 plus 5, and that gives me a total resistance of 7 ohms. Easy enough. Now, let's find the total resistance in this parallel circuit. Same idea with one light bulb being having a resistance of 2 ohms and the other having a resistance of 5, but the methodology is different because of our equation. For a parallel circuit, 1 over the total resistance equals 1 over R1, so like 1 over 2, plus 1 over R2, which is my 5. Now, in order to add these fractions, we need to find a common denominator. So a common denominator of 2 and 5 is 10. To make this have a, a denominator of 10, I need to multiply it by 5 over 5, because 5 times 2 is 10. But I have to do the same to the top as I do to the bottom so as not to change the value of that fraction. Over here, I'm going to multiply by 2 over 2 because 2 times 5 is 10. And again, I have to do the same to the top and the bottom so as not to change the value. So 5 times 1 is 5. 5 times 2 is 10. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 5 is 10. Now I can add these pretty simply. So 1 over RT equals 7 tenths, because 5 tenths plus 2 tenths equals 7 tenths. Now I cross multiply. So I'm going to multiply that 10 times 1 and set it equal to 7 times RT. Now to find just the total resistance, I need to divide by 7 to get rid of it. And when I do that, I get a total resistance of 1.43 ohms. All right, it sounds really crazy. I promise it's not as bad as it looks. Now we are going to practice this like crazy so that you are a resistance calculating champ.